Hello, this is Rob McClelland with special guest Mr. Carlo Cancino, and this is Think Smart with TMFG from the McClelland Financial Group of Asante Capital Management. Carlo, welcome. Thanks, Rob. Happy to be here again. So the last time we touched base with our audience, we had completed the first five points in pursuing a better investment experience. And what we promised you this week is that we would look at the next five. So Carlo, the first one we are going to discuss is called Practice Smart Diversification. What does that mean to you? Diversification, Rob. We've heard it. We, we talk about it in every client meeting. Clients have heard it at end. Diversifying your portfolio means mitigating risk, spreading your risk around to many different parts. So I think of, I used to have a picture that I used to have in my presentations and it showed two elevators and on one elevator, there was one cable and on the other elevator, there was five cables. And I, I asked the question, which elevator would you rather get on? And the, the, the answer is pretty simple. You'd rather get on the elevator with five. When I'm ever, whenever I'm skiing, I always find it a little scary because there's only really one cable. So that worries me a lot. But I've sort of had to overcome that fear of lack of diversification on a, on a ski hill. So what does the research say about diversification? Why shouldn't we just put all of our money in Canada We've got, you know, a pretty good economy here. Everything's in Canadian dollars. We don't need to worry about currency. And Canadian companies qualify for extra dividend treatment. So it's got a tax advantage as well. Why wouldn't we do that? No, I, I hear you, Rob. I look at the Canadian market and the performance. We've got great performance long term. Look at the data. From 1991 to 2018, that's 27 years worth of data. Annualized return on the S&P TSX Composite Index, that's our benchmark that represents the Canadian market, return has been 8.06% annualized. Standard deviation being 13.78%. For those of you that out there that don't understand standard deviation, the higher the number on standard deviation, the more volatile the uh, performance is. The more it fluctuates from year to year. Correct, Fair correct, enough. correct. So that's the Canadian market. What does the global market look like? Over the same time period, annualized return on a globally diversified portfolio, 9.46%. You're getting a bump of almost 1.5%. But the annualized standard deviation is 11.19%. You're getting a higher rate of return with a globally diversified portfolio with less risk. So, And, and the risk reduction is about 20%. So that means the portfolio year to year isn't going to be going up and down by as much as 20%. That's pretty significant over time. Absolutely. Let's go to the next one, which is called avoid market timing. This one's always an interesting one to me because we like to think as human beings that we know what's going to happen next. There's always predictions as to which market will perform the best. Do those predictions come true or are they merely predictions? Like think of, you know, basketball. How many people predicted last year that the Toronto Raptors would be NBA champions? Uh, as a long percentage, do you think there was anyone? Well, being a long time fan, I would have, may have been one of the few uh, people that thought they would have been NBA champions, uh, relying more on luck or hope than anything. Absolutely. <laughs> and even during the year, the team changed. We traded away three starters. Yeah. Just like that. So avoid market timing is you really can't figure out. You might be able to get lucky and get the market high or get out of the U.S. market. So think of the U.S. market. U.S. market's been great for the last 10 years. So maybe you reduce your U.S. exposure for the next 10 years. But your chances of being able to do that with all the different markets, and not only that, but what about stocks? What about bonds? What about real estate? Real estate's had a great run. Is it going to continue? We don't know. 
Don't try and time the market. Stay diversified, stick to your strategy, and rebalance back to your strategy. That's the key. Exactly. We use a tool called the Investor Quilt. And really, the Investor Quilt is a time range showing the the uh, top performing, ranking the top performing asset classes over a given period of time. The one that I'm looking at now is from 2004 to 2018. And it just ranks every calendar year which asset class performed the best and ranking it downwards to whisk which asset class performed the worst. When I look at this investor quilt of different colors representing different asset classes, there is no rhyme or reason of what's going to perform best the next year or the following year or what's going to perform perform worse. It really just looks like the old television sets that we used to have when they'd go off around uh, 2 2 a.m. in the morning. You remember those in your lifetime? (laughs) Because I now think the TV goes on for 24 hours. Yeah, that's it. I don't stay up that late anymore (laughs) to see what actually happens after two or three. Exactly. So let's go to the third point. It's called manage your emotions. Um, Basically, what it talks about is, you know, when things are good, Don't get too excited. Don't get too optimistic. When things start to pull back a little bit, don't get too nervous. Don't let fear settle in. And again, if things start to rise, don't get too optimistic. you got to somewhat stay in the middle. And and that's hard to do when friends, family, uh, the press are all coming at you telling you to buy this and to buy that. Um, Managing your emotions is difficult. You know, it was just Thanksgiving. Right. People are getting together with their families and some family members are telling you, oh, I've moved to cash <laughs> or I've gotten completely out of the U.S. I had one client in earlier today and he, he said, Rob, I've got a lot of really smart friends and they're saying I need to, you know, uh, a recession's coming. And we talked about that. And so we, we went through the exercise of well, what would you do if you could sort of time this thing perfectly? And at the end of it, he sort of said, you know what, we'll just stick with the plan. Had another client in today, and she has a completely different outlook. She lets me worry about it. She doesn't worry about it. And we looked at her account, and we went back. She, we've been working together for over 20 years. She retired 15 years ago. She still has the exact same amount of money that she retired with, and she's been pulling out 4 to 5% of her portfolio every year. It's gone through some ups and downs. It dropped down, I think, 25% in 2008, but it recovered by the next year. So managing your emotions is key. It's hard to do, but you need to do it. The power of doing nothing when the market is volatile is very, is very powerful. So let's move on to the next one, which is somewhat similar. Um, It's called Look Beyond the Headlines. And the headlines that are discussed are, you know, retire rich, sell stocks now, the looming recession, uh, top 10 funds to own, market hits a record high, or housing market boom. All of those things are headlines that may intimidate you to do something different. Those headlines are out there to entice people to make emotional decisions. And we just talked about it a second ago. Manage your emotions. And the investment journey is a very emotional thing. And, well, let's, let's be honest. The, the headlines that we see, they're, they're out there to sell papers, to, to sell advertisements. And you shouldn't be allowing any of that information to influence what you're doing with your portfolio. So if I'm on Yahoo and I'm looking at the news and I see a headline that says the looming recession, I'm going to click on that, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, there's bad news uh, yeah. coming. As opposed to the headline says economy grows at 3%. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to probably click on that. I'm like, oh, that's good. Right. You know, I just bypass it. But the <laughs> yeah. looming recession, I'm doing a deep dive into that mm-hmm. one. The final one is we've got all these things that you're supposed to do, but what and, and we're telling you not to do most of them. What can you do? What are some of the things that you can do to have a good investment experience? You, clients should be focusing on what they can control. The things that they can control, number one, create an investment plan to fit your needs and risk tolerance. Different clients and different 
investors will have different situations. You need to create an investment plan that fits your unique situation. Number two, structure a portfolio along the dimensions of expected returns. We talked about it in the previous podcast where there are dr different drivers of returns where you get expected premiums. That's where you should be structuring your portfolio along. Number three, Rob? Diversify globally. We touched on it today. A global portfolio over time will have a slightly higher return with quite a bit less risk. It's, it's almost a free lunch. Not quite, yeah. but almost. Right. Next is manage expenses, turnover, and taxes. So what are the expenses that you're paying for the managers? Carla, you and I just looked at something today that said still the average expense ratio of an actively managed mutual fund in Canada is 2.3%. After all the, the advertisements that you see from, let's say, Quest Trade talking about fees and the reduction of fees, it is hard to believe that there are still fund managers in business that are charging that high. Absolutely. Portfolio turnover. Back to that, you know, that we discussed it before, the bar of soap, the more you play with your portfolio, the smaller it gets. And finally, taxes. We already pay enough income tax in this country. We pay a lot of HST, taxes all over the place. The last thing you need to be doing is paying tax on your investment portfolio. Some of it's unavoidable, but make sure you're not triggering gains and giving up a quarter of your investment to the government so that they can use it. That's not good, a good use of money. And I guess the final one is, and this is probably the hardest one that everyone has, stay disciplined through the market ups and downs. Last fall, think about it. Between September and Christmas, the market dropped almost 19.5%, almost 20%, almost a bear market in three months. And everyone started worrying, oh, this year is going to be even worse. This year, 2019, up to today, you know, mid-October, things look pretty good. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean we're going to finish the year at pretty good, but it looks pretty good so far. Right. So those are the things you can control. Oh, Rob, I think we're missing one more. What's that? And this is something that Rob brought to my attention the other day. There's focus on the missing asset class. And Rob, do you want to talk about the missing asset class? So really, what is the missing asset class? You know, the research, we've looked at it. I know Mike and I have discussed it. It's having someone to help help you through this whole thing so you don't have to figure out all of this stuff yourself. And that's having a good coach, a good advisor on your team, and uh, makes your life a lot simpler. It's well worth the cost, gives you added value, helps you grow your wealth over time. I think that's pretty good for today, Carlo. Um, I'm hoping Mike is back uh, a week from now. Um, I think our next podcast we may be doing uh, from, uh, from Charlotte right. uh, in the U.S. Uh, you and I are headed to a conference, and hopefully uh, maybe yourself, Mike, and I will uh, we'll do an update at that. That's it for this week. This is Rob McClelland and special guest Mr. Carlo Consino with Think Smart with TMFG from the McClellan Financial Group at Asante Capital Management. You have been listening to the McClellan Financial Group of Asante Capital Management Limited. Asante Capital Management Limited is a member of the Canadian Investor Protection Fund and Investment Industry Regulatory Organization of Canada. Insurance products and services are provided through Asante Estate and Insurance Services Incorporated. This material is provided for general information and is subject to change without notice. Every effort has been made to compile this material from reliable sources, however no warranty can be made as to its accuracy or completeness. Before acting on any of the above, please make sure to see a professional advisor for individual financial advice based on your personal circumstances.